My name is Stephen Battling. I'm the Director of the Industrial Transformation Research Hub for Aquaculture of Rock Lobsters. We're now arguably um, the world authority on breeding rock lobsters. Um, rock lobsters have been um, fascinating scientists for many years. Over 100 years in Japan there have been attempts to um, breed rock lobsters and they've been able to do that at a laboratory scale. But the, the big difficulty is being able to put it up into industrial size complexes and that's the aim of what we're trying to do is to take what we can do in the laboratory and actually get tanks of a large enough size and economically feasible to produce large numbers of seed stock. Uh, and the seed are going to be used for aquaculture and sea cages but also for stock enhancement and restoring the declining stocks that we have in the wild. And this is a new program that's been awarded by the Australian Research Council to develop uh, industrialised processes of the production of rock lobster aquaculture. So, so the program's divided into five different areas. We're looking initially at uh, broodstock and uh, trying to uh, ascertain the genetic breeding program to help us to, uh, to gain better insights into that. We're also looking at the systems development, so we're going to take the systems that we have at the current small scale and develop them into large scale. We're tackling one particular phase of the life cycle, which is the last phase between the larval cycle, which brings the animals back to shore. This is the final metamorphosis or the pluralist stage. And so we're putting a lot of efforts into that. We're doing a lot of um, physiology, understanding the physiology. And we're also um, looking at improving the health of the animals, so better understanding the health and juvenile grow out. So rock lobsters have a really complex and difficult life cycle. It's conducted in the ocean, so again, that provides another difficulty for us in terms of how to aquaculture them. And it's one of the reasons why they've been, uh, attempts so far have been relatively unsuccessful. These are southern rock lobster larvae. They're two millimetres in size. They're newly hatched larvae that have just been broadcast from the reefs where the adults are, where the females are, and now they'll be carried out on the ocean currents uh, where they'll undergo their long and complex life history. These animals are six months old, um, and they're the stage just before they metamorphose into pluralis, and pluralis is the same shape and size as a normal rock lobster, but they're totally clear, and they're the, uh, they're the stage that actually bridges the oceanic development where these larvae take place to come back inshore and settle on the inshore waters. We've been the only research institution in Australia that's been able to produce three different species. We've worked with tropical uh, temperate species that come from um, areas like New South Wales and also uh, cold temperate species that, that occur in Tasmania. So the commercial rock lobster fishery in Tasmania is going to benefit in, in a number of different ways. The first one which is going to benefit is we're going to know a lot more about the biology of lobsters and that's going to help us to understand and manage the fishery better. We've already, from the work that we've done, been able to uh, determine which are the critical stages in the larval development, which stages may be influenced by climate change, for example. Um, the second major part that's going to benefit the industry is obviously if we can get uh, commercialisation, industrialisation of the seed production so that we can produce seed cheap enough that we can then put them back out into the wild and they can grow up. What we have here is an eastern rock lobster. It actually came to us as a juvenile in 1998, a little tiny baby eastern rock lobster that came down the east coast of Australia and settled in Tasmania and we've subsequently grown it up to be one of our brood stocks. This is a female and you can tell that it's a female by looking at the third walking leg there. So one of the attributes of the eastern rock lobster is that, or the pack horse lobster as they call it in New Zealand, is that it actually grows to the largest size of any of the spiny lobsters, up to 15 kilos. When it's younger as this one is, uh, this was an animal that we produced in a hatchery in 2010, it's green in colour. Most common in New South Wales down through Victoria. It's, uh, it actually commands a premium price in the, uh, the Sydney markets. Unlike the Chinese who like a red lobster, people in New South Wales like a green lobster. So lobsters that are produced in Tasmania are shipped to China. Um, and traditionally, wild fisheries in Australia, um, the, the most valuable wild fishery has been rock lobsters, particularly in Western Australia, South Australia and Tasmania. Um, increasingly, aquaculture product is now the most important, or well, the largest component of our, of our seafood production. About 46%, I think, at the last census of Australian seafood was actually produced in aquaculture. Over a billion dollars of um, aquaculture product is now uh, produced in Australia. We've been involved in rock lobster aquaculture since 1998 through a special initiative funding from the Tasmanian government who have been fantastic supporters of, of our endeavour ever since we started. The university has had a program going with continuous funding through the Fishing Research and Development Corporation and the Australian Research Council since 1998. 
Uh, initially, this was a small group of scientists, but it's it's built up to the current uh, the current large numbers that we have. And the industrial transformation hub has a, a three industry partners, and two other universities. So it's a large group of people, over 40 scientists, technicians, engineers and manufacturers involved. We have um, a large industry partner, Darden Restaurants from the United States, who are actually uh, interested in sustainable seafood development. We have a largest producer of Australian aquaculture supplies in Plastic Fabrication Group, PFG. And we have a small uh, engineering firm in Tasmania called uh, Jane Sidison Engineering Consultants, who are helping us with the hydrodynamics. So it's a very talented group of people. We've got six scientists here at IMAS uh, in Hobart. We've got an additional two scientists up in the northern node of IMAS in Launceston. And we've got uh, researchers working with us with the uh, University of the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. And we've also got international partnerships with the University of Auckland in New Zealand. So the work that we've done has benefits in understanding the basic biology of rock lobsters. And this will be of um, benefit to the rock lobster fishing industry. And um, ultimately, if we're able to get stock enhancement working, it'll be of a benefit to both the commercial and the recreational fishermen.